After the ceremony, the royal couple celebrated with the most lavish wedding breakfast. More than 100 dishes, dreamt up by the best chefs in Britain. Food historian Annie Gray is taking up the challenge of recreating the feast. She's found the original menu. Not just fit for any old queen, but seemingly created with this one's appetites in mind. What was Queen Victoria's favourite food? Food in general was something that she would embrace. One of her ladies-in-waiting recounts her sitting down to an afternoon tea at one point and putting away several slices of toast and cake and scones and getting to the end and looking with regret and going, I suppose I should stop now. And what was food in general like then? A lot of butter, a lot of cream, a lot of brandy. The meat is often larded, so that's sewing strips of fat through the flesh of animals. This is a recipe book written by Charles Elmay Francatelli, who was the cook to Queen Victoria after William Ball, who was the mastermind behind the wedding. So we are fairly certain that his recipes must have reflected the kind of thing he was serving for the Queen. The menu for that day, it's enormous. There are, I think, about 100 or so dishes. You've got lamb cutlets, which have been fried, fried bird, chicken. Um, you've fried got bird. Fried bird. On the opposite page, an outlandish dish, which looks like a pile of eyeballs. And this is a tambal of macaroni, which is tremendously complicated. That involves little tubes of macaroni cut up, put round a mould. Then there's a mousse in the middle, and then there's chopped up chicken breast, and then that's been steamed, and then turned out of the mould perfectly. I look at that and think, I'm not sure how it will come out of the mould, or indeed how you would go about building it. The most challenging thing is this gâteau au fouettage. It's 10 or 11 pieces of puff pastry that need to be piled up on top of each other, with the outside then masked with meringue, and then a sort of meringue steeple on top. The risk is you end up with a sort of leaning tower of Pisa effect as it slowly slides to one side. I'm glad to hear there are a few surprises <laughs> and challenges thrown in for you, then. Well, yes. And since Queen Victoria's chef had sourced locally where possible, Annie will do the same, much to the surprise of her regular suppliers. So, I'm recreating Victoria and Albert's wedding feast. Well, I can't say I'm not apprehensive. It's quite a long menu. You've got mutton fillets, bird fillets, larded, sweetbreads, which we're going to lard, so we need some lardoons as well, actually. And the thing with the roast, they're all served with their heads and legs on. Can I get a hair? And I need to hold so that I can skin it and leave the ears on. 